hey, let's set up uh, a travel dial, the lathe, lathe carriage uh, indicator uh, that came in in the 1960s. So you can hot rod your old gearhead lathe to 1960s standard. Probably 1960s uh, into the 1990s. So the travel dial been around for 30 years anyway. Uh, well, let's have a quick look at it. Got it installed here. I believe these uh, came in in about the 1960s, probably the early 60s that uh, these travel dials became popular. You can see I do have two of these. <laughs> okay. Now, the way this thing works is the flex base here, and you load it with this yoke and this set screw, and it pushes it into the ways and then creates a, a spring pressure on it. So it's got a pressure against the waist. And that's regulated by a little indicator, a spring inside there, if you can see it, probably not, that uh, when you start compressing it with the yoke, it'll fall towards the bottom of the window, and then you got the right amount of pressure so that it's kind of a gauge there. Now, to adjust this thing, um, you've got tilt, and what, what I did here, or yaw maybe, you can get a dial indicator, dial test indicator, right on these posts, see? Then you can move the carriage back and forth and uh, indicate off these two posts here. Get it within a thousandth of an inch is good. So you indicate this with these two posts. And you, and to adjust it, I'll take this apart. I'll, I'll set it on a board with these two bolts, okay? You adjust that yaw. And if it's uh, off like that, what happens is if you travel back and forth across the distance of the machine, it won't return to zero because it's cocked and not track, tracking correctly. So you want these things to track correctly. And they tell you uh, to start with two degrees tilt. And I've been using these for a long time, and I put a degree and a half tilt in the base that the mount I make for these. I make my own mounts for these. Uh, there's no parts available uh, like mounts and stuff. You can get the plastic uh, crystal. You can buy the yoke. I think that's 60 bucks for that spring. Yoke there. And you can, you can get some of these small parts. But uh, I, I make my own mounts rather than uh, uh, the travadial mounts were generally uh, cast aluminum and they're kind of big and they're kind of overbuilt. And so I just build them out of ground flat stock, screw them together, okay? And it makes them real compact. Now, one of the things you gotta consider now this machine here has the thread dial built in. S many machines have a, a thread dial out here. And Travadal made some mounts that like jumped over those and stuff. Really some <laughs> kind of some odd stuff. So you gotta decide whether this thing's gonna fit on your machine in the first place. I, uh, this mount here, I reworked uh, it to fit on here, and I had it on a couple of lathes before. I had it on a Lodger Shipley power turn. I had it on something else before that. So I kind of recycled the mounts. Okay. So they tell you to have two degrees tilt. 
to start out with. And you'll find if you run back and forth and it comes up short, you have to tilt it more in because the wheel is tapered this way. Okay, so if you tilt it more like that, the wheel goes a shorter distance to make a revolution. If it's over traveling zero, then you tilt it back like that. It gets on <clears throat> the slightly uh, larger diameter of the tapered wheel and slows it down. And that's how you zero this thing. And it took me an hour to do it. So I didn't do a video. I'm just going to tell you about it. So it's not that hard to do. And once it's set, it's pretty good. But as you're tilting this and tilting this, you got to keep checking this. You got to keep doing it. And I'll show you how to um, set this up. Okay, so this thing's set up. It's working good. I'll get this out of the way. And we and the first thing you do, get this thing at two degrees. Load it so the spring's in the right position in the window. You have the right tension against the ways. Then you run it back and forth several times. Several times. And what that does is uh, it gets a, a little micro track uh, etched into your way, the side of your way there. Because that wheel is really hard that's uh, in this um, Travadial. And what are we doing? Creeping off a little bit, but we'll... Let's run her back and forth a couple times here. See how we're doing. See how I'm still making light adjustments to it. <laughs> okay. So what I have here is I got a four inch square gauge block, an old kick around gauge block up from fingerprints on it. I, I think I bought this on eBay with some other square stray gauge blocks for, you know, pretty cheap. And, uh, you know, it, it's still very accurate, you know, even though it's been kicked around and it's good enough for this. So I got the carriage stop here. So you bring the carriage up. You can use a micrometer standard, but I find this big square block nice. You can use a uh, five inch standard. I think it's what uh, a lot of people use, but this is a four inch gauge block and it's good enough. So I got that gauge block wiggled in there and uh, let's set that on zero. It's about a half thousand thought. That's right on zero. I hope you can see that. Okay, now I'm gonna remove that gauge block and bring it up to the carriage stop. How are we over here? We are just about a thousand short. I want to try that again. See, I still have to adjust this. How are we doing over here? On zero. Bring it back. And one thousandth shy. So what we gotta do is take, get your wrenches. I don't need that one. This is the one I need. So I'm gonna tilt it that way just a little bit. So I got those Allen screws there. And I'm going to push it up here just a little bit and see what happens. Okay. Get that gauge block in there. It was still very good on zero. Let's get it over there. See where we're at. How are we looking? 
right on zero. Now let's go all the way to the end of the machine. Right about there. Bring it all the way back. Get that gauge block in there. Okay. Bring it in, wiggle it in. What do we got? One thousandths too much. Okay. Over to that stop there. One thousandths too much. So what I got to do now is because uh, I moved it just a little bit, but it's but it's reading the same is I got to readjust the yaw. Okay, I'm going to run out of time on this and uh, I'll, I'll get busy with some of that and show the disassembly of this. Okay, got this uh, leveled that way. Now I'm going to go back. I got it against the stop here. And we'll set it on zero. Let's go four inches away. See how we're doing? Wiggle that thing in there. That feels pretty good. Right on zero. Let's take it back. See if correcting that yaw helped a little bit. Back we come. Okay. Right on zero. Let's go to the stop. right on. This Travadial is working perfectly. Okay, now what this did is it turned this old gear head lathe into a hot rod. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a lot easier to use, a lot more productive. Now, I poked around on eBay and you can find these things for 400 bucks from uh, Express Tool in California. He's got a couple of them. I bought a lot of KDK <clears throat> tools uh, from them. And, you know, it all went well. I'm not connected, don't know them. But I'm just saying that they got some decent looking ones that are complete with the base and, and everything. So. You can turn your lathe into a hot rod for around 400 bucks. Maybe you ought to buy two of them. <laughs> One is the spirits, what the people used to do. So, okay, I will load this video and uh, call it good. I am just so thrilled to have a, a Travadile on this uh, hot rod axle set. Okay. <laughs>